Hello. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wolf Den Live, episode 64. Now with four player squit screen multiplayer and rumble pack support. Squit, squit, squeen. That was really hard for me to say. <laughs> squid, squid, squid. That was really hard for me to say in one take off the cuff. But we have it. Our audio may not be as good as the competitors, but we look better. So, Fred with the $10 super chat off the bat. Wow. Thank, I told him thank I you, Fred. I told him it would cost $1,000 to not hear about the Switch. And he gave us 10. So, I'm trying to I don't know the math of that. But oh, he like, put it here. It's 990 more dollars and then we'll stop talking about the Switch okay. for today, <laughs> which we really don't have much to talk about the Switch. Anyway, well, yeah. How are you people? Fred Caloric Spaz Spaz the Axe Bear, Atten, AJ MG13, Boss Brick, Comboy. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone and anyone who is joining us. Alejandro Vega Flick. Feisiest Ninja. Part-time job shut ya. And eat say that. It. Say it. Eat that kitty. 555. Five, oh, you <laughs> suck. This is a family-friendly show. No, it's not. Pussy. It says pussy. <laughs> How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm Everything great. is great. Um... Playing a lot of Zelda, trying yeah. to. That's that's like How's a it? that's like a bedtime slash nighttime dump situation. <laughs> is Zelda? Well, that that's a big game, and like going to bed, you're tired. You're probably like falling asleep, and like the bathroom. I mean, granted, sometimes you can spend half an hour in the bathroom, but oh like, yes, I feel like Zelda. Zelda is a game that you gotta like actually like dedicate some time to. Yeah, you know, I mean, I really... spent like a good hour or two like in. It usually ends up being like an hour and a half in bed just yeah. laying there playing Zelda, and then my arms get tired because I have to hold up the system. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to get far in um, Mass Effect also. Yeah. Mass Effect. I really like Mass Effect. Yeah. I want to plow through Mass Effect. <laughs> that, that's more of a priority, even though the Switch is more convenient. Yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you. I'm trying to plow through Iron Fist on Netflix. Yes. <sighs> that's, that's difficult. <laughs> that is like... Let me just say, like, all everything you've heard, I'm only five episodes in, but everything you've heard is true. It's not good. Yeah. It's just straight up not good. Would like, you say worse Netflix series? Yeah, yeah. That I've seen so far. Because like, even, like, the one Netflix series, like, people don't like, there's still redeeming qualities to it. Like, my fiance doesn't particularly like Orange is the New Black, but there, that, like, at least she knows, like, there's a lot of good parts to it. This, there's, like, nothing <laughs> good about mm-hmm. Iron Fist. And that sucks a lot. Yeah. It's very clear that um I think his name's like Scott Buck, the showrunner, um doesn't get the character, doesn't get the whole Marvel universe, and he's much more interested in like the corporate espionage world of Iron Fist. Not the cool stuff like the karate <laughs> or the fact that he had to fight a dragon to become Iron Fist or any of his time in Kunlun. You know, it's uh, it's. It, I'd like to see some dragon fighting. Yeah, right. It would be awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I, they say it's budgetary reasons. I doubt that because like it took us five episodes to see his tattoo mm. on his chest, and they did like everything they could to avoid it. Like he's shirtless for like a few scenes, and like they don't show it. Like you barely see like the whole hook coming up. That is like dumb. they're they're. It feels like they're going out of their way to ignore the more comic booky aspects of right. it. Like he doesn't power up his fist a whole lot. That's another problem because like the fight scenes in this are awful. That is very unfortunate. Yeah, people are giving Finn Jones a lot of crap for this show. Like I don't necessarily think he's bad. I think he's just acting the way iron fist is written and he's written very inconsistently like he'll be super like angry pissed off and then just be kind of aloof the next scene with no rhyme or reason right. uh but he does not know kung fu like <laughs> at all like it's very slow and like i swear to god there there are the editing of it is so bad there's a scene where a guy's gonna kick him and it's just it's standing around standing there for like two seconds and then he grabs the foot <laughs> It's uh, I I'm trying because I I want to just I wanted to get it done before this episode so I can give a full honest opinion to you guys, um, but it was so hard for me to do because two episodes I'm like this this is already really bad. Um, I'm gonna finish it reluctantly, 
Um, io9 has an article of all the things you need to know about Iron Fist so you don't have to watch it. Um, read that because, yeah. Feisty Snooze says, Iron Fist was disappointing but not as bad as everyone says. I've heard that it's not as bad as everyone says. You're telling me it is as bad as everybody says. <laughs> It's it's better than you think it's going to be, but it's still pretty bad for what it should be. Right. You know, especially compared to Daredevil and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. Now, granted, I've only seen the first season of Daredevil and, the, and Jessica Jones, but those are really good. Like, the fight scenes in Daredevil are amazing. And, like, it, it uh, Iron Fist doesn't even come close. So... That's really disappointing. The the two people say like the best character in this is Colleen Wing, um, which is sort of true. But even she like has her moments of like, really, what the hell are you doing? The best characters in this series are um, Claire Temple, Rosario Dawson's character, and Jerry Hogarth, um, Carrie Ann Moss's character. But they debuted in other shows, <laughs> so they're just a carryover from the other shows. I keep having people trying to sell me on the David Aja run of. Uh... Yeah, Iron Matt Fist. Matt Fraction, David Aja, the two guys who made the best Hawkeye book, yes. um, and Ed Brubaker. Apparently I really like the Hawkeye book. Apparently, uh, with Ed Brubaker, apparently they made the best Iron Fist book. I have it. I haven't touched it yet, but is that's it, next on my is list. Is it on Marvel's app? Should be. Okay. It's old enough. Should be. Okay, I'm gonna log into your account. All right, go for it. Read that. I'm gonna. I have the I have the physical. You could just borrow that. Yeah, but then it's physical. Yeah. I want it. I want it on my phone or my <laughs> iPad. You know. Um. Then I gotta hold a book. Yeah. Crazy. What else? What Death else? Note. Yes. Did you see the trailer for I did Death not see Note? The trailer so if for you Death don't know Note. Death Note's an anime, it's one mm-hmm. of the best animes of all time, <laughs> I would say. You've never seen it. Right? I never have. It is very good. Mm-hmm. I think I stopped watching at the last like five episodes. Ooh. So I still never watched the last couple yeah. of episodes. Because it kind it has it like the whole goal of, of Death Note is is like it comes to a like a definitive conclusion and yeah. then there's like a lot more episodes so it's like really it's a little bizarre and i i came to the definitive conclusion and then it's kind of stopped i kind of lost interest yeah but man it is i mean i i'm still interested i want to other things led me to not watch right it, but it is amazing it is really good the tr- they put up a trailer for they're making a netflix original movie right it's a movie i thought it was a series it is just one movie okay uh, for Death Note, it is all whitewashed American people, except it's not whitewashed because uh, L is a black guy, apparently. Okay. <laughs> so it's black and whitewashed. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I think they changed his name from Light Yagami to Light Tanner. Okay. Because he's white and he's right. blonde. Yeah, of course. Uh, I don't think it looks very good. <laughs> <laughs> um... Like I don't know what it, it doesn't look anything like Death Note except yeah. that except for there is a Death Note and there is a Shin, 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 Shinigami Shinigami Shin, 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 Shin Megami no Shinigami Shinigami Shin Megami is the video Tensei game. yeah <laughs> Shinigami there is a Shinigami and it looks kind of cool but you see it for like a second yeah Did you see the trailer no do you want to see it it's a minute long all right let's go for it isn't right. Willem Dafoe playing that character uh he was supposed to in a movie but wasn't uh. What's his name? Wasn't uh freaking uh? Is he in it? Why don't you look? I that think up I'm pretty I... sure he's in it. Well, I pull up the trailer. Yeah, hold on. I'm gonna switch to desktop. This might get loud, so actually, it probably won't be loud at all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint you, people. Yeah, he's in the tra- he's in the he's in the trailer. Only thing is, we might not, we might not be able to hear it. Right. But uh, nothing happened. <laughs> there's no, okay. there's nothing really happened, so don't worry. There it is. That's the Death Note. Oh. That looks cool. Yeah. The human whose name is written in this note shall die. People killing themselves. Ferris wheel falling apart for some reason. Shall we be 
again. Yeah, I think that was him. Yeah, that, that was, was one, one, yeah, the that's one of the foe. He's so, playing uh, Ryuk, the one of the Shinigami. Yeah, so you see him for like a second, and it's kind of uh, bokened over, like his eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I don't think it looks it, like it, it. Death Note isn't an action movie, right? It's it's a thriller. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's like a mystery, like thriller. Yeah. Uh, so, it, we need that. That's that's what I want to see. Yeah. You know. So I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a movie, so it's not going to be a long series. Maybe I'll actually watch it. Yeah. Maybe. Um. Do you think? You know, this is being this has been whitewashed. Ghost in the Shell um, is famously whitewashed. Uh, Iron Fist, there was um, people would rather it have been an Asian American actor playing the lead role. That would not have helped the series, by the way. Right. Um, do you do you feel like Death Note um, should have kept uh, an Asian American cast in the? Series? I don't think they should have made it at all. Really? Okay. They're, fair enough. <laughs> it shouldn't. Be, it shouldn't be a yeah. thing at all. Because when have they done this right? This is true. It's like making a video game movie. You yeah. can't do it. I mean, just don't do it. It's yeah. not worth. Wasn't it. there a loop on the third uh, movie like a few years ago? Was that actually Japanese? And, like, yeah, wasn't yeah. that like garbage too? Yeah. 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 They can't do it either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it just. Like an anime has to be an anime, uh, uh, a game has to be a game. But like, yeah. I'm sure there, I'm sure there's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. This is definitely not that way to do it. S something has to come along. So somebody has to come along and make a movie based on an anime mm -hmm. that has, that is strictly Japanese, and all like, it has to be it has to be like to the source material, like, right? Like Death Note. Has a lot of Japanese culture in it. All of the characters are Japanese. The main character is Light Yagami. Okay, like, come on. Yeah. Um. So, like, somebody has to come along and have the balls to cast a lot of Asian people, right? And make them awesome. Yeah. And make it a really artsy movie, not a Hollywood movie. And then, if that, if if they if they can pull that off, then we'll get more stuff like that. Right. But. In that's not going to work the way it's going right now. Right, you can't just whitewash the whole thing, and you know, I I see that they're trying to appeal to an American audience because yeah. it's bigger. Right, we probably have it would probably make a lot more money. Yeah, but um, I don't think Death Note's going to do it. Yeah, I don't think it's. Just watch the anime. The anime is going to be a thousand times better than this is going to be. probably. Even though Willem Dafoe is in it, he can't. I don't think he can save. Willem Dafoe can't save everything. Uh, somebody was saying that it's got like a brick type vibe. I mean, I love brick. I love uh, that, brick that didn't too. feel like that didn't feel that much like brick. I think it's just that the high school yeah environment, the high school noir style. Yeah, which is barely you barely get any high school in in Death Note. Mm -hmm. So I hope they don't give you too much of that. No, yeah, it it didn't feel Death Note at all. Right. To me. Um, but yeah, Ghost in the Shell. They're, they're trying to make a big blockbuster movie, yeah. so like having Scarlett Johansson, that's that's a. I feel like that's a little different. Yeah, there should be other Asian people in it though. Yeah, because it like legitimately takes place in Tokyo. Yeah, this takes place in America. They're, right, they're changing it. Right, right. Um, Fred says One Piece is the best anime. I wouldn't know. I haven't watched all eight hundred <laughs> episodes. <laughs> Uh, Kentama actually brings up a good point. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow was good, and that was based on a manga. All you need is kill. Based on a manga, yeah. Manga, I mean, manga is is crazy in its own right. It's yeah, probably, oh, more over the top than that. Yeah, but um, I feel that's I feel like that's different because you could comic books can make great movies, right? You know, you have to take a lot more liberty. Mm -hmm. You could take a lot more liberties, I guess. The problem is that anime it's it's already a, like a like video it's already yeah and same thing with video games you you're all you already have all the cutscenes it's already there you yeah. just you're pretty much remaking the whole thing right with manga you have the storyboards yeah and now you have to make the rest you have of to it. put it together yourself um at least that's how I feel no it makes sense 
Uh, Christian says, so wait, what's this based on? Part of my ignorance. Oh, the whitewashing. I started. I think he was yeah. lost. Christian says, SpongeBob is the best anime. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are bringing up the Captain Underpants trailer in the comments. Yeah, I'm not watching that. I, I'm i going to after the show. I promise. I haven't seen it, but... It looks good. It, it exists. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it. It's, it's okay. Whatever. <laughs> I used to watch. I used to read them all the time. Yeah. I don't remember a damn thing about yeah. them. How, what do you need to remember? The man in his underpants. Let's talk about the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, Will. Yes, let's. Oh, uh, you said you had a lot to say about it. I kind of want to hear. I feel. I feel like I over exaggerated. How much does it cost? Seventy dollars. That is way too much money for a controller. Okay. Well. I titled this, How Much Should a Controller Cost? It shouldn't cost $70. It shouldn't... So here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing that got me thinking about this. Okay. Uh, Microsoft announced a new controller. Mm -hmm. Microsoft is making a new Xbox controller inspired by the military. I think it looks stupid. It has these dumb-looking designs The little it. grip things? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just read the article. Xbox mm -hmm. just announced a new controller, the special edition. This is Kotaku, by the way. Special edition Recon Tech wireless controller to be released next month with a stylized utilitarian look. Xbox says it was inspired by military technology, combat armor, and sci-fi mechanical gear. The controller has been etched. The controller has etched textures on the front and back, apparently for grip. Yeah, there's like a weird, yeah. like, uh, foamy grip on the back. Mm -hmm. Um apparently for grip like other xbox wireless controllers it's bluetooth compatible mostly it's pretty the controller will be available april 25th for a steep 70 dollars still less than the cost of an elite uh less than half the cost of an elite wireless controller right well that's 150 dollars. yeah which is insane but yeah. those are nice controllers those that's a premium product yeah that's that that will come back to that that's a separate thing altogether so 70 dollars is what is what this is going to cost mm -hmm. and is what the pro controller costs. i have up here microsoft's um actual store the microsoft store website funny you say that because i also have gamestop but continue so because th this is like the actual the recommended retail price for the controllers that's why i wanted that Right. So the white Xbox uh, One controller and the black one, those are like the standard ones, are $60. If you want it in like a funky color, you can expect to pay anywhere between $65 and $70 for them. Right. Like there's this really nice Xbox One controller that I want that's all red. It's $65. Right. That's stupid. That's insane. <laughs> that's ludicrous. I can't... like. I get that you're packing a lot of tech into the into these controllers, but sixty five dollars is ridiculous. Like, how do you expect to sell multiplayer game couch co op multiplayer games? You know, or if a controller breaks and needs to go out again and a replacement, how do you expect to sell them for that much money? I would love to get a new controller for my Xbox One because I have an original one that doesn't have a headphone jack and doesn't have Bluetooth built in. But this is very cost prohibitive to me right now. Like, and, you know, the design lab, I understand that's the one where you can, like, custom make right. the controller. And you can make some nice ones. $80 to custom make a controller. That's custom. Yeah, but it's still $80. It's, and for comparison, uh, DualShock 4 retail uh, suggested Sony price is $55. That's still not much that, better. And that's not what they're selling for they're selling right. for 60 yeah so what i was dual shocks are selling for 60 and the colored ones are 65 yeah exactly the same as, as right. xbox i have the dual shocks on screen right now yeah um m the point i wanted to make was that everybody flipped out when the pro controller was 70 dollars <clears throat> meanwhile I was thinking, I was like, when these control when the systems came out, when the Xbox One and the and the PS4 came out, yeah. the controllers were similarly priced. Yeah, they were still too damn high. Yeah, that yeah, they never changed. Yeah. They're, so the pro controller is pretty much in line yeah, with, no, the other, with the is, other controllers. It is in line. But that's still a pro you know what I think it is? Is because there have been sales on the other controllers where right. they eventually do dip. Right, to like and you'll never get that on the Pro Controller. $40, which is reasonable. You'll never get that with the controller. Pro Controller, and you're not going to get cool designs on the Pro Controller. You're not, no. You're not. Which is unfortunate. I just saw, what did I see That's here? some really nice 
designs on the Pro Controller. Yeah. On, I mean, on the... Um, Xbox One controller? Xbox One controller. Yeah. I think I have a piece of chocolate Maybe. on me. Uh, Best Buy is currently selling a wireless Xbox 360 controller for $30. This is new to me because up until like two, three years ago, that was a full $60 thing. A 360 controller. Wow. Still. So how much do you think a system controller should cost? $40 max. $40? $40. Wow. That's, and that might even be too much. I, I would, I, and honestly, I don't even think I would pay $40 for a controller unless I either really wanted it or really needed it. I think it should cost the price of a game. No, I don't. No? I you disagree. Don't think so? I feel because this is something you need to play a game. So the barrier of entry, the cost of entry needs to be lower. Yeah, but you have it already. But if, what if you want another one? Then she should be the price or, of a game. No, because like you need to. You know, that's adding just more cost to something that's already an expensive hobby. You know, it's and it's an unnecessary cost at that. Mm. Like, there's no way these controllers cost this much. I, money what I make. don't think is the design should cost more. That I don't. Think. Absolutely not. That is that is ridiculous. Co- charging not. a premium of five to ten dollars more just, just because, because it's a color different differently. Color. Yeah, yeah, that that's is absolutely not, ridiculous. That is not cool, especially for playstation because at least microsoft has cool designs on them yeah the playstation controllers literally are just a different color plastic yeah and they're charging five dollars more for them that is ridiculous Mm -hmm. um seventy dollars is a little insane for a nintendo product yeah i think that's whatever because that's almost necessary yeah because that does not come with because i think even the wii u pro controller was I mean, it's still expensive, but it was like fifty bucks, and that was cheaper than everyone else's like regular yes. controller. Yeah, at the time. well, that's because their games and stuff were cheaper. Yeah. Um. So I don't th- like. I don't think sixty dollars is that uh, exorbitant for uh, a controller. Right. Uh, there is, believe it or not, there is a lot of technology tossed into it. I know, like the PS, especially the micro, the, the Microsoft one. The, yeah, the, the Xbox the one. Because ha- the controllers have like the rumble. Yeah, and all that it's stuff. got the rumble. The triggers have rumble. It's got both Bluetooth and a proprietary wireless system that connects directly to the Xbox One. Um, it the f- they do a lot of weird crap with the buttons and the joysticks to make sure like they're they survive like a million presses. It works things like that. It works. Uh, plug and play with any. Windows computer. Yeah, there's that. I mean, the the DualShock Four has a speaker in it, the touchpad, the gyro, the light bar. Right. You know that's understandable. Um, and and the Wii U Pro Controller has the advanced uh, gyroscopics that the Joy Cons have and the Rumble the Switch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. It has the NFC, so you can tap yeah. Amiibos onto Got it. Also. That. Yeah. So it there's a lot. It's still too much money. It's still way too much. I money. think that the Xbox One and the PS4 controllers have more in them than the Switch Pro Controller. And I think the Switch Pro Controller should not be more than these other two controllers. I don't know. I feel because like of that. If we're being serious Cause, cause, minute, Because the like... HD Rumble, it's not really there in the Pro Controller. Not to the extent that it's in the Joy-Cons. Right. I feel like, you know, it's it's two things. It's, it's competitive, and I feel like the tech is comparable you know, because that's a lot of crap crammed in there compared to the other stuff. I mean, they all have a lot of crap crammed in there, but it's just different kinds of crap. Right. So. Uh, the Joy-Cons are $80. Yeah, that. How much were the Wii, the Wii remotes when they came 40. out? They were 40 yeah. yeah. They are $40. That's... It was $40, and I think the the nunchuck was 20 Yeah. So it equaled a normal <laughs> controller. Yeah, which is ridiculous. So, no, I thought that was... I thought that was good because the it was cheap because the Wii was cheaper than right. a normal controller, and then you add the nunchuck and it equals the same as a normal. Yeah, because I like you can add it when you were ready. Except the know? PS3 controller and a Xbox 360 controller was that fifty dollars or was that sixty dollars? They were, I think they were like fifty, fifty-five. But, but I remember like that was the first time I I realized like controllers were getting expensive. Yeah, you know because they were wireless and you know, you know they had all these triggers and stuff. Yeah. So Xbox 360 controller pioneer of its time yeah Xbox 360 controller one of the best controllers yeah ever still made. holds up the d-pad doesn't but everything else about that yeah the d-pad up. is stupid yeah but um the, the joy con controller is yeah that's uh, I, there I, is a lot packed into it there is a lot packed 80 into it is 80 is asking way too much of people yeah it really is 
I think a lot of it has to do with that. Um, the you can get different colors. Yeah. Now, now there's only red and blue. Red, blue, and black. Yeah. Um, but eventually, if you want to like uh jazz up your system, yeah, you would just get Joy Cons and you can slide them on the side. Yeah. So if they have special edition systems, they can make special edition Joy Cons, and you bet your ass, I'll be buying. Yeah. So How can... much are they individually? Because it's eighty dollars together. You can get them individually. I yeah. didn't even know that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's more if you buy if they buy them individually together, like they sell them in a two pack. I'm gonna look it up right now. Yeah, I don't. Know, I just it, it makes me so frustrated because I do want to get another controller for my Xbox One, but I don't want to spend all this money, you know. And I want you know one of the newer ones. I want one of the ones with Bluetooth in it and the the headphone jack in it, you know. But I got I gotta wait till Black wait, Friday wait, wait, or something. What? An Xbox controller? Yeah. With Bluetooth and and a headphone jack, with does does you have to get a special one? It doesn't well, just have it. Well, what happened was when the Xbox One launched, the controller that they came with didn't have Bluetooth in it, just the Microsoft proprietary signal, and it didn't have a headphone jack because they wanted you to go buy special headphones or like an oh, adapter God for it. Help me. Which I did. That was twenty five dollars for the adapter, and then I bought the the chat pad, which was thirty dollars. That has a headphone jack. And I'm happy I have the chat pack because I need that. That's another thing, too. <laughs> Systems need to start coming with some sort of keyboard peripheral because it, more and more is becoming more important to type in video games with, with regards to Netflix and the respective stores and entering your name in the menu system in a video game like and messaging. You know, Keyboards need to start being included standard on video game systems. That's my stance on that. You could plug a keyboard into it. I could plug a regular. You, you have a keyboard. I do, but you know what? I wanted some something like right there, so that right, when right. I'm gaming, it's right there. Yeah, we used to have one for the 360. Yeah, for I that lo- reason, I love that thing. We used to type in a lot of codes. We did we typed in a lot of codes. I once had to message my friend using a Guitar Hero controller. That was not easy. That doesn't sound very. Good. That was not easy. At all. Well, take a guess how much the individual Joy Cons. Well, you have it on screen right now, so I'm going to say fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it is fifty dollars for yeah. one Joy-Con. Yeah, so you can buy them separately for a hundred bucks together, or just buy the pack for eighty dollars. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Um, the Joy Cons should be sixty dollars, I think, yeah. individually forty. Uh, that's more fair, right? So the problem with Nintendo... and they should come with a grip. Yeah. Because the grip is literally just a piece of plastic yeah. with a light in it. I feel like the problem with Nintendo, though, is that they take forever to lower their prices on anything. Right. Because they, they right. really like to keep the uh, value of their product high. And, and they like to make a profit yes. on, on this sort of stuff. So, I mean, unfortunately, we might not see that for a while. So, but I would love for Microsoft to just cut the price of their controllers. That that would be the good guy thing to do. So you think they should all be forty across 40. the board? Yes. All right. I think that's a little low. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Uh, Tevia says games should be thirty or fifty, which is a weird sort of in between. Not sixty dollars. Fun fact about games. <laughs> uh, they've always been this much money. Yeah. And they never changed with inflation. So games technically are cheaper than they've ever been. Keep that in mind. Yeah. That you're never going to get cheaper games. Inflation. Unless you just buy indie stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, AJ says, it's a perceived value thing. Nintendo is all about that, which is what you were kind of saying. Yeah. They will always charge the highest price the market will allow them, especially if their competitors price similarly. I would argue against that because of their, uh, you know, like the Wii was cheap, the cheapest console around. Yeah. The Wii U was trying to be cheap. Um, the GameCube was was cheaper than the other stuff, I think. Yeah. Um, they were. Tr- they tried. Uh, they they tried to price their systems cheap. And the games, the Wii's games were cheaper. The Wii U, yeah. I think, took a while to go up in price. No, the Wii U was... It started you know, at 60? It started at 60. Okay. Well, the Wii was 50 for, for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, they, they, they're... I guess it's because the technology isn't there, so they feel like they can charge less. Yeah. Oh, well, well, they still make a profit on it, though. Yeah. So, uh, I don't think it's as much about their competitors... 
I guess it is a little bit about their competitors. But, it, you know, they're, they're still cheaper yeah. in some cases. The Switch, eh, not so yeah. much. Uh, and the dock is the dock for the Switch is ninety dollars. Didn't that go down recently? Did it? I heard. I heard it went down. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. No Switch dock. That was the only peripheral that I thought was was priced appropriately. Uh, let's see here. I saw some people saying that controller should be $20, 20 to 25 That would be beautiful. A little ridiculous. That would I be would, beautiful. Would, we would have so many controllers would. if that was the case. Take your time, GameStop. Uh, I'm not seeing any doc. I'm going to assume it's still $90. Kentama says, I vaguely recall some games being in $80 back in the 90s. Uh, this is true. That yes. has to do because they were actually put, like jamming chips into making the cart and like the plastic for the cart. And cart, you know, cartridges were expensive. Yeah. Uh, games varied drastically in price. Yeah. It wasn't really until like CDs came along where like they, that was, um, where they standard, standard was set. Yeah. Um, AJ says the dock is the only thing I find ridiculous. It's just plastic. I kind of agree with him. Yeah, I thought there was going to be more yeah. than that. But I remember when it came out, I said that is the only thing that makes sense yeah. to be ninety dollars. But now that it's out, nope, it's dumb. Yeah, it should it should, yeah. it should, it should, it should be a lot cheaper. Now, Especially think, like but. if you want to, you know, have switch, you know, put the switch on a bunch of different TVs or like have it at another house. You, you know, know, okay, I've been taking it. I've been docking. I've been switching yeah. a lot. You've been switching. I've been switching. I have to say, I'm getting a little scared of plastic. Oh, really? I don't put it in like a maniac. Right. I, I tilt it back and put it in, but I feel it. When I'm putting it in, yeah. I'm like, I know that, that it's you know, they the make, plastic is uh, touching the glass. Like, I think it's on Etsy. You can get the, like the, the cozy. Yeah. You, you can, can get a little cozy. But I kind of want to. Do it. Yeah. I kind of want to do that. I bet you it's cheaper than a controller. Yeah, it's like 10 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, blah, blah. Boss Brickwire control so overpriced. Jonathan Kissy. Why should you pay like $60 to play a game that costs $60? You're not. You have a <laughs> controller. You own a controller. Some people are saying that controllers should should uh consoles should come with two controllers. That would you know, that would be ideal, I think. You know, a lot of a lot of systems do that sometimes. You See, know, here's they're the doing special bundles. Here's the problem with that though. The only time I ever want another controller is when it's a cool design. Yeah. <laughs> or like a collector's edition or something. Yeah, I mean, we got, for the PS4, when I was still playing, I got the blue one because it was it, it was around $40. And, you know, I because I just got Mortal Kombat and I wanted right. to like play two plays on that. There um, are a lot of sales on PS4 and Xbox controllers. On Amazon, you'll see it every right. once in a while. I mean, the, the Amazon, for the Xbox One at least, it's, it's usually the black one. Which is yeah. which is standard, or if you might get unlucky and get one of the old ones. Same thing with PS4. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting that the Switch kind of does come with two controllers. Technically, yes. It it's it was their way of trying. Yeah. To be like the Famicom and come with two controllers. Yeah. Because Famicom was like the last system that came with two controllers. Built in. Yeah. Yeah. The NES. I think you needed like the family pack to get two. Yeah. Controllers. I mean, we bought our N64. We bought a bundle that came with two controllers. Really? Yeah. Oh, it wasn't it like a Costco bundle or something? No, it was a, to it was a Toys R Us bundle. Did we get it when it came out? I don't think we did. No, we got that in like 1999, I think. 99? Yeah. It took us really? a long time to get an N64. Damn. Like, that was a sh that was a war. I remember get, we didn't even one. have any games for it. We had we had to rent uh, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I thought we only rented that because it was like the only thing around. No, yeah, no, that that was that was a struggle to get an N sixty four in this house. Believe you me. Maybe it was ninety eight. I remember it, it taking way too long to get one. All right, Will. Yes, Bob. Let's talk about this briefly. Okay. Do you have anything else? Because I barely... I got I got a couple of things. I mean, All right, let me can... let me do this first. Okay. Um. Oh, let's let's do this. Is important. Uh, okay. Last week we talked about Colin Moriarty. Yes. Uh, he left kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Uh, it 
that it was always going to happen that he was going to leave yeah to do political stuff it's but just unfortunate it was, that it happened around the time it, it, it got rushed along a little bit because yeah. he tweeted something against women and or that wasn't really even that bad yeah. and he he decided to quit because there was a little bit of backlash that he wasn't happy with but anyway he has since announced what he's doing yes he has a youtube channel called Collins last stand uh he will be doing political commentary right. on his youtube channel and he started a Patreon mm-hmm. to get support. Do you know what it's at? It's like 37000 or something? Yes. It reached $37,000. That is per month. That is That's what people are crazy. pledging per month. That, I think, makes it the highest grossing Patreon really? per month. What is it? It 30... beats Kind of Funny, which they were the, the highest, which That's is the company crazy. that he yeah. worked for. Um, uh, 37000 37, thousand nine hundred and eighteen but here's the thing about patreon that's four hundred fifty five thousand dollars thousand dollars a year yes yeah. which he does not need to make this no <laughs> um we do this for a lot less than that he well <laughs> here's the thing i'm listening when you start a patreon yes obviously everybody's gonna go all in and then people back out yes so he's not making that much he's not right. making 40 Four hundred and fifty-five thousand right, right, dollars right. a year. He this will probably, I think, go down to kind of funny levels to like twenty-three, twenty-six thousand yeah. in the next which few months. Which is still a lot. Which is still a lot. That is still pretty insane, yeah. especially for one guy. He's just one guy. Yeah. I want to bring up uh, highest Patreons. What, what would I even say? Highest funded Patreon. Yes, because there is a list. Mm-hmm. I want to see if he broke the list. Unless this list is outdated. Real quick, you can get a white wireless Xbox One controller for forty bucks on Amazon right now. Ooh, white's not so bad. Yeah, I kind of want an Elite controller. Yeah, I'm like waffling back and forth. I saw a refurbished for ninety once. I almost bought it. Um, what is this chart? <laughs> <laughs> Am I? Oh, we're on. I didn't know that I was on screen. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so this must be outdated because yeah. um, he's not on here at all, and it's just all over the place. Eh. Like this, you is... can't you can't like sort it by. Oh, this is by patrons. Uh... That's why it's all over the place. What the hell? <laughs> That's not what I want. Explore top creators on Patreon. That's what I want. Can I get a list of like the most? Well, anyway, kind of funny has twenty six thousand, and then kind of funny games has twenty twenty or twenty three thousand right. per month. So he already completely lapsed. Kind of funny, mm-hmm. which what I thought was the highest grossing, but apparently they're not. Somebody can give me a link to the list of the highest grossing Patreons. That would be super sick. But yeah, there's these people, Chapo Trap House, which looks like it's only okay. 51000 per month. Amanda Palmer, which was under Kind of Funny for a while, is now at 37000 right. So wow. she's at Colin Moriarty levels. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. That is a little, that is a little too much. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just wanted to, because we talked about that last week. Yeah. So I wanted to so talk do about a this follow-up. Uh, moving on from that, mm-hmm. unless somebody can give me a link to the highest grossing patrons. Um, I also want to talk about real quick uh, this Kotaku article. Game developers respond to nasty tweets by donating thousands to girls make games. This is good. Uh, over the weekend, Naughty Dog. Artist Alex Neonakis, who I follow because I saw her do a talk at, I think, PAX mm-hmm. last year, and it was really good. She, nice. She's the UX, no, the UI artist at, uh, she does the user interfaces at Naughty Dog End. Nice. If you remember, The Last of Us had some damn nice interfaces. It, it did. Um, the Weapon Wheel, <laughs> for example. Uh, where was I? Alex started getting nasty Twitter messages from Gamer Gators 
and other internet critics. Exacerbated, she tweeted screen caps along with a message. I just donated to Girls Make Games in honor of these lovely boys. Thanks, guys. Other developers followed her lead. So let's look at what she actually tweeted. Uh, somebody says, and that's why you're cancer, you sexually assault psycho bitch. <laughs> and what she tweeted has absolutely nothing to do with it. Oh, it says... Pulls you in close, whispers in your ear. And our intersectional feminist ideas are in here with us. Kisses you on the lips. And then <laughs> this person said, and that's why you're cancer. You sexually assault psycho bitch, which Jeez. makes no sense. Yeah, that's not even... Um, she said, we're in your triple A's, indie, mobile, PC, console, board, card, hardcore, casuals. We're in all of them. Sorry about it. Somebody tweeted, you're... Eventually, you're going to go away. You all will. Hashtag Gamergate. Uh, somebody else tweeted, we're also in your journalism. And somebody tweeted, no wonder jur- games journalism is dying. <laughs> and she tweeted a picture of her donating $500 to right. the Girls Make Games thing. By Tuesday, hundreds of game developers had donated thousands of dollars to Girls Make Games. Because I follow her and I saw her retweeting all these people who were doing yeah. this. Um, an organization that provides workshops and summer camps to young women who are interested in developing video games. And this is where I started to not like Kotaku. <laughs> Before you start asking, why isn't there a boys make games? Consider that by the ESA's count, just 22% of game industry employees are women. That's why. Totally agree. 100% right. agree. Mm-hmm. There should be a girls make games yes. and not a boys make games because that's stupid. Yes. But what I would have said was... There's just summer camps where anybody can make games. That's more inclusive. I wouldn't have have put that in the article. Period. Like that. that, That's true. That did not have. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be there. Putting that in there specifically sounds like he wants to pick a fight. Yes. And like that, you know, that didn't need to be said. I. I just. I'm just saying. If you want to be inclusive, just donate to a camp that will allow anybody yeah. to be a game well I but, feel, but i feel like girls the, need more exactly i feel like in this it. a situation like this where women are in general less likely to partake in science and math and technology you know specifically targeting them through something like this is more right. beneficial than you know the great all-inclusive utopia that you know hippies are looking for i found a blog post on patreon these t- 35 creators earned over 150,000 on patreon um, but it lists them by uh, the amount of patrons they have. Not... Yeah, that's what that list had. Yeah, kind of. Dumb. It was kind of funny. And then Crash Course, then Amanda Palmer, then Easy Allies, which I did not know uh, was on Patreon. Uh, Sci Show, Peter Hollins, uh, La Vega Bonde. I pronounced that wrong. Ruben Report. Oh, I didn't know they were up there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a whole, whole bunch of people. Anyway, uh, Naughty Dog Girl, Neonicus, uh, who has written for Kotaku about her work, blah, blah, blah. We're not promoting Kotaku yeah. anymore. <laughs> uh, she started seeing angry tweets on su- Saturday night after she wrote a rant about the vile treatment of an EA animator who worked on Mass Effect Andromeda. She said, I've worked in this industry for 10 years. I have clawed to where I am today, despite people telling me I couldn't and shouldn't. She wrote on Twitter, and at every damn step, some asshole likes to pass it off as, well, you're a girl, so obviously it helped. That is not right. Yeah. (laughs) That is messed up. Um, Yeah. If you didn't know, I have a video about it. People are pissed about the faces in Mass Effect Andromeda. They look stupid. The, The animation is not very good. People targeted specifically one animator who used to work at Bioware, who doesn't even work there anymore. You've never, I don't think he ever worked on the game. Yeah. Right. And it was a girl, and they ripped her apart. Yeah. Which, these games are huge. A lot of people work on them. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there was more than one animator. And yeah. they just for Honestly, everything that everybody's saying about the, the facial animations in Mass Effect Andromeda, it's about one character. Yeah. A lot of them are bad, but everybody's targeting one character. So... Like, give it a rest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought that was cool. If you want, donate to Girls Make Games. You can Google it. You mm-hmm. all have Google. Um, and if you're a girl and you want to make games, maybe check it out. Yeah. Because, I mean, they're... 
video I, I don't want to say the games industry needs more girls video games in general need more outspoken girls it needs to be more welcoming towards yes, girls that too i feel like that's a bigger issue because a lot of girls you know either don't play games or they don't get well, into the, it here's the because thing. it's very toxic towards them. that's the thing i think 40 percent of gamers are girls it's just that they're not vocal and they're not in the community as they're much. not playing you know they're generally not playing like the hardcore triple right, a like right. all those games they're playing other types of games that appeal to them which is but fine. at the same time you know that's a problem because a lot of the hardcore triple a all that garbage isn't focused towards them right. they're all you know the 13 year old boy drinks mountain dew and eats doritos type deal that's why a lot of games from last generation starred white dudes with you know military cuts right i i, I think it needs to be more inclusive is yeah. is, is all i'm saying that doesn't mean change the games to have more girls in it right you know like make the game that you want to make yeah. i'm just saying that like it, we as a community need to be more welcoming basically it's, it's the community's yeah. fault basically just don't be assholes yeah don't like, be an it's, asshole. it's not that hard and not everything is chalked up to them yeah. being a woman like if if the person's a bad animator they're a bad animator yeah. it has nothing to do with what's in their pants you yeah know? um not you guys you guys are all right and again that bioware animator didn't even work on the game yeah so it's not her fault yeah whoever worked on that one character yeah. is a bad animator <laughs> guy or girl um so yeah that's it everybody's okay. donating to girls make games yeah. donate to them if you want or check them out if you if you want or if you have a girl if you know a girl that wants to get into making video games check out girls make games yeah what do you got? Over there? Uh, all right, I'll just plow through these real quick. Uh, just a quick follow up on Iron Fist. His new uh, comic book series came out today, and apparently, it's not good either. So <laughs> Iron Fist is not not having a good week, Bob. Um, okay, so the Power Rangers movie comes out uh, this week. Yeah, uh, we're all excited for that. Whoa. Uh, sarcasm. Um, how many how many movies you think uh, they want to make? Out of this this series, the Power Rangers. I'm gonna guess trilogy, but the way you just like grazed my knee it sounds like a lot more than that well you're you're half right in the trilogy they want to make six they want to make six seven including the one coming out Compar oh, so this one doesn't even count apparently mm. according to <laughs> Hayam saban who is the owner of the power rangers like period like if you see saban's power rangers that's the saban right um they already have a six movie story arc planned for the next six movies. Wow, I'm so sorry. I got a lot of news for you. <laughs> You're not going to make six movies. Yeah, uh, you'll be lucky if you get a second one. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, that's that's some wishful thinking. I know movie studios do this all the time. Like, oh, plan for sequels. That'll never happen. But, I mean, six? Come on. Yeah. And apparently, the movie's not good. So, I, I don't... I yeah. mean, who thought it would be? They, they tweeted uh, uh, four different posters. Yeah. Like, like... Uh, like variant posters that you can get i guess at the studio yeah. i mean at the at, at the, the theater. theater yeah um one of them was cool <laughs> uh they all they were all different drawings and paintings of the power rangers but the movie versions yeah one of them looked great because it was stylized a little differently and yeah they, it didn't really look like the movie costumes yeah um they should have done that <laughs> And they did not. Uh, apparent, uh, I don't want to get too into it, but apparently it's more like a teen drama than a you know superhero movie. Like the apparently like the Zord fight is cool, but otherwise they should have done it like the comic and made it campy on purpose. Yeah, that's what they should have done. Um, yeah. All right, I'll just plow through this real quick. There's gonna be a new uh, since uh, the new Fifty Two started way back when. DC hasn't really done a lot of big company wide crossovers. They they have done they've really only done like Forever Evil and Rebirth which was one issue, um, and Convergence which was just time filler nobody cares about that. Um, but we got a new DC event coming out. It is um, Dark Days. It's gonna be two issues, only two. Um, what are their names? They got like really ominous names. Uh, Dark Days: The Forge and Dark Days: The Casting that promise to re reveal the dark underbelly of the DC universe. Um, it's going to be written. By Scott Snyder and James Ty in the fourth, and feature art by Jim Lee, Andy Kubert, and John Romita Jr. Those are all big names. Yes, these are very big names. Um, it sounded like in the beginning, just you know, the big mystery about like this under overall darkness that's like deep within the DC universe that like they're gonna try and figure out. But 
as the interview went on with Scott Snyder, he talked about how it sort of is a conclusion to his Batman series that he did with Greg Capullo. Really? Greg Capullo is not involved in this, though. So Interesting. Yeah. Like, it's interesting that he would choose now to, like, tie up those loose ends instead of waiting for Capullo to finish up what he's doing with Mark Millar. Right. And I know they're not on bad terms. Maybe he just doesn't want to do it. I don't know. Capullo maybe just wants to do something he's, else. Uh, Snyder says, Dark Days, uh, posits. Posits? Is that how you say that word? I don't know what word you're talking about. Dark Days has a mystery that traces all the way back to when I started on Batman. I've hinted at them over the years with Easter eggs and clues. This is a mystery that literally begins at the dawn of man and spans generations of heroes and villains and ultimately leads to a huge revelation about the past, present, and future of the cosmology of DC. I couldn't be more excited for Dark Days. So it sounds like this is something he's been working on since the Court of Owls. And now he's finally going to get to... You know, I'm interested, yeah. although I fell off of the Capullo arc. It got really weird when Gordon took over. Yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't read that. Yeah. It wasn't bad, but um, one other thing I just wanted to bring up about this. Um, he specifically said it's not going to be about superheroes arguing with each other and fighting with each other. That's good. I quote: "I want I wanted to build out of stories happening now and creating new material and giving everybody a place to tell stories that fit what they're doing on their books and feels really modern and different and above all fun. I don't want it to be grim, even though it's called Dark Days. Uh, <laughs> I, I, and it's Batman. Yeah, I don't want it to be superheroes arguing over something. Superheroes wouldn't be fighting superheroes. I want it to be celebratory, huge, and crazy. I'm going for all out of control dinosaurs and lasers." So whoa, whoa, there you whoa. go. Is that serious or is he just I is mean, that a metaphor? I, I don't know. I'm either way, that's good news to me. I want out of control dinosaurs. Especially, yeah, especially since Marvel's uh just wrapped Civil War two, which sucked, and they're gonna do se- a secret empire, which you know is essentially superheroes arguing with each other again. Now all this said, uh this comes out in June and July, these two issues. All that said, this event has nothing on um, what's probably going to be the biggest comic book event of the year, um, the Archie three-part series called Over the Edge, uh, where a character will die. Cool. Wait, is this is this the adult Archie? It's uh, the modern Archie, the the Mark Wade Archie. Okay. Yeah. So it is the, the okay. Yeah. The aged up Archie. The age, it's like slight, they're still teenagers, but like they're modern. So it's for, but is it for adults who grew up with Archie, or is it for kids? It's 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 more for like, it's not really for kids. It's like a little bit older. It's this okay. Archie. You've seen this Archie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The more modern. Archie. When they when they redid it. Yeah. Because they recently redid. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. That's this. Okay. That that's a really good series though. Surprisingly, I heard the show was actually pretty. good. I don't know Riverdale. what the hell is going on with that show. <laughs> like it's a murder mystery and everybody's having sex with each other. Like I don't know. I I, I don't know. It sounds like a Smallville, but Archie. Yeah. And and sex, but that sex. makes more sense for Archie than it does for Smallville. Right. Apparently, though, Jughead um, doesn't eat hamburgers on the show. <gasps> That's a problem. Was he vegan or something? I don't know. He just hasn't had. a Maybe hamburger. he secretly loves. This is this is what it is. This is definitely it. He secretly loves hamburgers, but he doesn't know it yet because he's a vegan. No oh, god. That would, yeah, that and then when he has one, he's gonna, it's going to be like the best day of his life. That's <sighs> what it is. Um, um, and real quick, I just want to do one more thing. Because the past, like, two, three weeks, people in the comments have been asking um, about Thor and what Nick Fury said to him to make him lose his powers. Mm-hmm. They finally revealed it. Really? It's it's weird. You should do a video on this. I should. You think I should just wait till? I mean, you could say it now, but then do a video on it. All right. It. <laughs> okay. Cause here, so here's what happens. Um, so Thor, Thor, actual Thor, the Odin son, not Jane Foster Thor, uh, has a new series called The Unworthy Thor, because he's unworthy. Um, We find out why he became unworthy. Um, Nick Fury leaned over into his ear and whispered in his ear, uh, Gore was right. Gore. You just just woke up my Siri. uh, Apparently Siri is also unworthy. (laughs) Gore was the God Butcher from writer Jason Aaron's previous Thor series, God of Thunder. And Gore's whole mission statement was to prove that the uh, gods of Asgard... Um, are not special, that they're, uh, quote, vain, vengeful creatures, and that mortals are really 
um, who are the most important beings in the galaxy. So what Fury said to Thor wasn't some magic spell. It was Thor coming to that realization final like after all this time like oh my god he is right then you know the the gods of asgard are worthless so he relinquishes his position as you know the god of thunder to be so he does it willingly he does it willingly so it's not that he's unworthy he just he just un he just willingly gives it up the whole the the series uh the unworthy thor was about him looking for ultimate thor's hammer to use when he finds it he decides not to use it because it's all about him <laughs> that is dumb. relinquishing like this position. That's what, that's what it's about. Is that is that all of your stories? That's all my stories. I would like to say special thanks to uh, Harry, uh, James Horton, Jonathan Cassie, Revan, three two one game time, K Sift, Randomock TV. Junkie Drake and Cool M for subscribing. We got a lot of subscribers. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Guys, leave your questions or comments. Yes, in the now chat. is time for questions. Uh leave your questions in the comments. Reach or us super on super chats because we love money. Yes, we do. Or you can reach us on Twitter using the hashtag Wolfden Live. Um, or you can leave comments in last week's Wolfden Live video. Yes, if you're not here. Yes. If you're here, just leave it in the chat. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I should have pulled this up. <laughs> I think I read a few from last week. So, oh, somebody tweeted at me too. Hold on, mm. we, we have the hashtag here. Okay. Uh, where to go? Uh, Andre says switch outsold we in the first week. U.S. is not the only country in the Americas, you know. So we we screwed up last week and yeah. said that uh, the United States. We, we said America when we meant the United States. Right. Um, get on our level, because <laughs> America rules. Yes. <laughs> Weak. Um. Fred says, thank you, Will, for getting me hooked on Kill or Be Killed, unless he said it last week. Uh, Fred also says, Keanu Reeves said he'd back a Bebop movie, but not star if it happened. Who do you want as Spike? I think Keanu would be a... I mean, I've never seen him play a villain, but he'd be a good vicious. I'm trying to think of what time he played a villain. and I'm pretty sure it wasn't in a good movie. Uh, who would you want to play Spike? Gotta be someone like tall and skinny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Spike's not Asian. Yeah, that's the that's the thing, because Cowboy Bebop, the characters in it, I don't think are specifically Japanese. Right. He's, his I, name's Spike Spiegel. Yeah. He's not and yeah. What's her it's like Saint Valentine something? Yeah, right? uh Faye Valentine. Faye Valentine. Uh I don't know the other Ed. guy's name. Oh, Ed. Yeah. Ed might actually be Japanese. Maybe. So <laughs> yes. Uh because that's the thing, like some anime, like are, is clearly like European inspired, like this Trigon, um, right? But like then you have things like Ghost in the Shell and Akira that you know aren't, are very clearly Japanese. So yeah, I don't know. This this could be the one that everyone's okay with whitewashing. Yeah, I mean, no one will ever be yeah. fully okay, but I don't know. I, I have no idea who. I, I somebody new, somebody yeah. different. Maybe one of the kids from Riverdale. <laughs> Uh, oh, last week we got a lot of comments because we were talking about Colin. Yeah. And it got a lot of people mad. Yep. Uh, a lot of people wrote a lot of long things. Yeah, it's very passionate. Kiss Bomb says, how do we all feel about Tim wanting to fuck the Disney princesses, though? That's what I want to know. That's his thing. He wants to bang the Disney princesses. Does he know that they're all, like, teenagers? That's why it's a problem, Will. <laughs> That's what I want to know. And considering one of them is actually is an actual fish, we may be stumbling into territory of bestiality. Thoughts? Yeah, he wants to bang little kids. It's not good. Yeah, it's not good. I am the Jew. <laughs> says, would love to see you guys work with kind of funny. I would love to. I would that. love to. Maybe a Sonic Let's Play with Tim when Mania comes. Yeah, out. now that there's no more negativity around that franchise and that. You know, office anymore. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, 
I mean, he was the like catalyst of negativity yeah. for that. Uh, Joshua says, "What is with the contextual argument? We really need context for a Simpsons level joke. The context is that that's just part of the argument, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't think it's necessary because he's tweeting to his followers, but um, people are saying that that's why it's blown out of proportion because you 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 take that." And when you put it in the context of look at what this guy said, yeah. then you have a problem. Also, The Simpsons like is not some you do not talk bad about the Simpsons. See, in this we can dojo. take we can take Simpsons level joke from your comment and say, What, you don't like the Simpsons? The yeah. Simpsons isn't good. This guy hates classics. Yeah. But I I get what you mean. <laughs> Simpsons episode seasons one through ten are the greatest television ever. And by that I mean Simpsons seasons three through eight are the greatest television <laughs> ever. Uh, uh, MDB said last week in response to Will saying there was never a good 3D Mega Man game I almost agree with you but then I remembered Mega Man 64 Legends which was pretty fun also that Mega Man RPG for the GameCube was good you're not remembering Mega Man 64 and Mega Man Legends correctly <laughs> I guarantee you go back to play I, that now It's it does not hold up I will be honest I liked it a lot and then I went back and played it a yeah. few years ago and it really wasn't was there good. a Mega Man RPG on GameCube? Command Mission oh that wasn't good a lot of people liked it now, who liked that? who I mean, liked that? I mean that? It's, it's like a turn based RPG so I, I'm not going to play it yeah uh, Marcus says, come off it. People are so sensitive now. Everybody wants to virtue signal and defend a victim group. Colin was thrown under the bus. Freedom of speech includes offensive comments. Social justice warriors at, it, at its worst. Liberal morons. Kind of funny will bomb now. Especially after other co-workers piled on him during this bullshit. Snoop Dogg does a video shooting the president in the head. No media, no mainstream media comments. This then this stuff happens. People call for the assassination of Trump, and but that's okay, as it suppose as it supports the liberal view. I ser- heard about the Snoop Dogg. First of all, I saw the Snoop Dogg video already because yeah. it was big on YouTube. But then I heard it was all over Fox News. Yeah. And they are I don't care what you say they are a mainstream media outlet. Yeah. <laughs> like I know they don't agree with the other mainstream media outlets but they are a mainstream media yeah. outlet. So yeah, if you watch the news you're going to hear about Trump right. getting shot or assume assumably shot. Yeah. Um as for everybody else throwing him on the bus, they were just saying that they don't particularly agree with his yeah. tweet. Also, your freedom of speech includes offensive language, yes, but it does not include the the absolution of criticism for it. Yes. Like, if you tweet something offensive, yes, you're allowed to say that, but people are also allowed to yell at you for that. It's why the KKK is allowed to exist. Yeah. We don't have to agree with it, but they have to the, the, be given a platform. The First Amendment only protects you from the government. So yes. the government can't do anything about that tweet, but everybody else can. Right. Uh, I don't like this new world we're living in where somebody says something and it doesn't even have to necessarily be true, and then it gets echoed over and over again, which is yeah. what happened to Colin. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it happened with this with friggin' Mass Effect. They 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 yeah. show one clip of the one animation that's bad, and everybody's like, "This game sucks now." Yeah, like that's really unfortunate. But that's the world we're living in. Somebody, one of my friends, uh, what was it? Oh, the new iPhone came out. The no, oh, the red one. The red one. The, yeah. There's a red iPhone now. Um, it's just prog- the, it, it's just the iPhone Seven, but it's you know yeah, the, the yeah. Project Red color. Yeah. yeah. Which I kind of want. MKBHD made a video uh-huh. about it. Oh, no, no. He tweeted. First, he made a video, but he also tweeted saying that uh, it's so good looking. It's just unfortunate that the front is white and not black. It is? Yeah, it's white. I don't know why it's a big deal. I love the white color on the front. And I think it. I think black would look stupid. But anyway, um, my friend went into our little group message and said, did you see the new iPhone? The new, the, the, the red iPhone, the oh, front, yeah, the front's uh, white though, not black and looks stupid. And I, I knew that he said that <laughs> only because MKBHD said it. 
I thought, that's the echo chamber that we're right. living in. Is people are finding criticisms, and then that one little criticism that's not even a big deal because that's a beautiful phone. Yeah, just gets echoed like crazy, and that's scary. Honestly, I kind of wished it was all red, but yeah, that yeah, it should that be probably would have been better. That would be better. I don't think the white looks bad. It, does, I, it, I doesn't look, see, it doesn't look bad. I could see you wanting a black option, but I I'm, don't think the white looks I bad. I am a fan of the red and black right. combination. Um, yeah, no, this is a good looking phone. I would get this phone. My point is that people yeah. pick one criticism, it gets echoed over and over again, and then all of a sudden the thing sucks. Yeah. And I don't like that That's at all. That's part of the reason why I decided to watch Iron Fist, just because so, I had to see. You had to see for yourself. I had yeah. to see it, and they, they, they were right. Uh all right, I'm going to the chat now. Okay, yeah. We've been ignoring you for too long. Yeah, sorry, guys. There's a lot going on. Uh, Tevia, question. Any, my, any opinion on Superman Reborn? I haven't, read the last, I haven't read the last issue yet, but every issue up until now has been great. So I will probably read the last issue right after this show. Bobby the OG says he likes the Venom video. Thank you. Common Boy says, favorite game franchise of all time. I feel like we've had this question before. Probably. I don't know. There's a lot. Mario. You definitively Mario? Yeah, I think I just definitively say Mario. Did you say Mario? I've been trying to Are say you trying, it. You're I'm, trying to I'm, change I'm... You're a traitor. <laughs> I've been I'm dying on this hill. I want you I, to know. I it's really hard for me. Like I'm I'm trying I'm gonna make fun of you every single time you say it. I'm you know, stop it, the it took whole me, show. I, I it took me forever to say Ryu. Instead of Ryu. Right. But now I, I say Ryu every time. That's fine because that's Japanese. Yeah. And we don't speak it. Right. Mario is a, is Italian and, <laughs> and isn't he Italian-American? I don't think. Is he an Italian-American plumber or is he just an Italian? It used to be he was from Brooklyn. Right. That's what I thought. Right. The, that's not canon anymore. I, I don't. Because if he's from Brooklyn, it's freaking Mario. Okay? I think he's just happens to be a human who lives in the mushroom kingdom that happens to have an Italian <laughs> accent. I don't think he has a nationality. That's true. That's true. There is no earth where he's from. Right? Yeah. Except, yeah. I mean, you know, that would help it not be racist. Because yeah. it, it, if you want to talk racism, Mario Ma is Ma freaking yeah, racist. Mario is pretty racist. Uh... Boss Brick Productions, are you looking forward to Defenders after Iron Fist? I am. Because if anything, I feel like Iron Fist is bad. I don't think, you know, if this is going to affect... I, I feel like Marvel can fix this. You know, I, it, he'll be fine in the Defenders. He might not get a Season 2 right away, but maybe they'll put him in Luke Cage Season 2 and we'll get Heroes for Hire, which would be great. Because the same thing kind of happened to the Hulk. You know, the Edward Norton movie, like, not a lot of people liked. Then Mark Ruffalo was in The Avengers, and everybody now loves the Hulk. So. Christian says, Bob, will you please do a follow-up review of Tinder? Here's a little something I'd like to say about <laughs> Tinder. Not necessarily about Tinder, just about girls who are on these dating websites in general. Yeah. Why do all of them love the outdoors so much? <laughs> what do you mean? They're all like, love, love being, love the sun, yeah. love, the, love the outdoors. I don't know. Why? Uh, I don't. Get, so, get away from me. So find an invalid. <laughs> Jesus. What do you want from me? Can I put that? Uh, oh, yeah. I said I was going to make a Tinder. I was going to make the profile. Um, uh, must love modding Nerf guns. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Tevi asks, do you think a Black Cat or Silver Sable movie can work? Did you hear about this? No. Because now Sony wants to make uh, more Spider-Man spinoffs, one starring Black Cat, one starring Silver Sable. To answer your question, Tavia, no. <laughs> just no. Sony should stop trying to make Spider-Man ex extended universe and just let Marvel do what they do best and collect the money and shut up. Fred said, yo, Bab, is there going to be a, a, sh a Twitch stream? Yes. So here's the deal. After this, I always stream on Twitch about an hour or like an hour after this, I usually stream me drawing the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. This week's going to be different. Just trying new things this week. I am going to start streaming immediately after this stream. So uh, it's going to be like 10 minutes, but I'll, I have to restart the computer. But I am going to, as fast as possible, go to Twitch. So everybody here, move to Twitch. I will drop the link in the chat. Um. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Mikachu, have you guys beaten Breath of the Wild yet? I myself am waiting to beat all the shrines before I take on Ganon. There's 120 shrines. Jeez. That is insane. Um, I have not beaten it. Uh, where am I at? I haven't even done any dungeons. I'm at the little fish guys. I forgot what they're called. The Zorons? Zordas? Whatever. I'm, I'm hanging out with them right now. I'm about, I'm about to go into their little lair. Um, but no, I'm trying to beeline through everything so that I can beat the freaking game already. I want to get... I want to beeline my way through all the Divine Beasts, get 10 Heart Tanks, get the Master Sword, go beat Ganon, and then break the game in half and throw right. it out. Uh, the Feisty Ninja. Are the Wolf Brothers going to play Horizon Zero Dawn? No. I would like to. I would like to also, but I know that I'm not going to. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Yep. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching us. Thanks for chatting with us. As always, you can catch us every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time um, on Wolfden Live, youtube.com slash Wolfden. If you are listening to this in audio version, uh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Google Play. Um, and if you do that, please make sure to rate us and review us because that helps us with placement on those specific uh, platforms. Yes. <laughs> Like I said before, I am going to be on uh, friggin' Twitch right now. So go over there and wait for me. I'll be I'll be like five ten minutes. Um. So yeah, we'll see you guys in a week. Yeah, for more Wolf Den Live. Wolf Den Live, 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 live. Thank you very much. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.